I'm gonna share with you the day that I quit my job without a plan or any idea of what was gonna happen next. And this is a two part video because there's so much, there's so many key points that you need to hear. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you a series of jobs, of challenges, of obstacles that came up for me and some of my limiting beliefs that came up. And I want you to listen for if any of this sounds familiar to you, as I also detail my transition from being in a nine to five, working for someone else, to then leaping into entrepreneurship. I, like many of us, worked a nine to five for several years before finally becoming an entrepreneur. And it's kind of funny now looking back on how much I hesitated to make that leap because I believed that having someone else sign my paychecks was more secure. If 2020 taught us anything, we've learned that that's not exactly true, is it? I worked in the nine to five world for several years with no promotions or raises and struggled to feel like my work even mattered. I hated that I had to request time off, whether it was for a vacation or a doctor appointment. You know, just needing to ask permission for freedom didn't sit right with me. And I knew that there was a ceiling on my income, my freedom, and my creativity. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm also gonna share with you the formula that I've used to be able to build an online business where I can be selling my products and services at high ticket prices consistently. So stick around so I can give that to you too. Before I became an entrepreneur, I was a dental hygienist. And before that, I worked in radio and television. I worked in event management. And I just, at the time, fell in love with it because I was working with people, with celebrities, with actors, with people that I grew up watching on TV and listening to on the radio who had this, you know, charisma. They were performers. And I was obsessed with the stories that they told. And I always wanted to be part of that at some capacity. You know when people ask you, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I felt this pull to have something secure as a fallback, as a plan B for security, right? How many of you guys want that security? You know, money in the bank, ability to check out at the grocery store or pay your mortgage without an insufficient funds notification. We wanna have that safety and know that our families are taken care of. Nothing wrong with that. So my mom told me about dental hygiene, which sounded cool because it's not the kind of job that you have to work overtime or have deadlines or bring work home with you. You literally can't. So it was secure. It fit the status quo. I could work nine to five, get two weeks vacation, blah, blah, blah. Comment below if you've ever chosen a path just because it was safe. And then I'd love to hear from you about the moment where maybe it all changed. So dental hygiene was safe, but when I was in this world, in entertainment, radio, events, it was unbelievable. It was like every day I was running on adrenaline. Spoiler alert, not good long-term, but it was such a thrill. When I was working in radio, I would get to produce interviews and meet these big celebrities, go backstage at their concerts, and with the events company, the people who, their books are lining my bookshelves today. I was managing their contracts, handling them backstage, taking them to dinner. I was in my early 20s at the time, and gosh, I, I wish I hadn't taken it for granted as much as I did. I really had no idea the power and knowledge that I had with these people right in front of me. I wanna get into more detail about that, but first, have you subscribed to my channel yet? I post new videos about video marketing and business acceleration tips every single week, so go ahead and click that red button. It's totally free for you to join us and the community. I got to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with these guys. After their performances, their presentations, book signings, when the buzz of the audience would die down, I got to spend some time and see the real people, the humans behind the charisma and the charm that they dispel on stage. There was this one time we had a show with um, a household name comedian. I don't know if I should say his name, but you totally know who he is. He was writing some funny tweets to post on his social media. And I thought it was so cool that he was asking my opinion, you know, if I liked them before he posted them. He was like, do you think this is funny? Do you think this is a little too much? Do you think people would like it? Have you ever thought that or, or asked someone those questions before maybe posting something online? Like maybe you thought it was too vulnerable or second guessed or wondered if it was good enough or you wondered what kind of response it would get? Hmm, celebrities, they're just like us. At this time, I had some paparazzi friends as well. And because they knew that I was already familiar with being around celebrities, meaning, you know, I was familiar with the celebrity world. A lot of them knew who I was and also that I could talk to them like normal, not necessarily fangirl around them. Although let me tell you, if I ever met Zac Efron, I might definitely fangirl over that. Anyway, besides the point, 
they would sometimes bring me with them to be their paparazzi assistant. Basically, my job was to go with them and ask the celebrities for an autograph that the paparazzi would later sell. And it was really interesting. Like the paparazzi world is this super underground thing. They have their own vocabulary and slang for how they get info on celebs. Like that's one of the phrases they would use. They'd be like, hey, you got info. And some celebrities would have relationships with the paparazzi themselves to be like, hey, I'm planning to be landing at this time. I'm staying at this hotel, come take pictures of me. And then when they would, they'd be like, oh, please no photos and poshing up a storm, you know? During this time, I was a little bit torn because it was very exciting and there was such a thrill. I was hardly ever sleeping. My self care was at its worst. And I also didn't have stability financially, emotionally. There's a lot of politics, drama, egos. So I was really struggling of finding my place of where do I actually wanna go? How long can I maintain this or keep this up? So then I transitioned into a job working for this event management company. And at the time I got a side job working for this famous author because we met at an event we flew her in for to speak at and we just totally hit it off. And she asked me to do her social media for her. I didn't even know at the time that I could get paid to make content on social media, but I knew her book and I knew her as a person so well, it just came easy to me. I, didn't, I couldn't believe that people could get paid for that. And here's where everything changed. My boss found out and he didn't like that I had a side job. So he fired me. I was so devastated. I loved that job so much. I remember being in the stairwell when he escorted me out and I said to him, if you fire me from this job, I'm gonna die. And I honestly, in that moment, thought that was true because outside of that job, I didn't know what else I had. This was my life. This was my self-worth, my identity. I defined myself by what I did for a living. This was a low point for me. I walked out that office feeling like I had nothing left. Like I just lost everything that shows the world that I'm important that I mean something. So the first thing I did was I called my friend Becky. I told her what happened. She immediately met me for lunch. I even got a free dessert at the place we went to because I told them that I just got fired and that was really nice of them. Then later I got a call from a friend of mine that worked at the office that I'd just been fired from. So I met with him and at first he said all the things that you typically say to your friend when something like this happens, you know, there's bigger fish in the sea, everything happens for a reason, that sort of thing. But then our conversation got really interesting. He asked me, did you really think this was gonna be a forever career for you? And then he also asked me, have you ever heard of the term waypoints? At the time I hadn't, but I'm gonna explain it to you in the best way I understand it now. So imagine that you're on a plane from Boise, Idaho, where I am, to New York City. In your mind, you might think it's just a straight shot, but in reality, there's waypoints all along the way. And a waypoint in aviation is this location along the flight path. So on the way from Boise to New York, it's not just A to B you're there, it's A to B to C to D. Each point is a stopping place on the journey. So at each of these points, the pilot regroups, calculates their coordinations, how much fuel they have, if they have all the fuel they need to keep going and successfully get to the destination. So these points help pilots to know where they are and where they're going and if they still have what they need to get there. Like what happens if you don't have enough fuel? What happens if your coordinates are even a degree off course? You're not going to New York anymore. So my friend told me this to say, there's no finish line. This is just a waypoint. And so think about that for yourself. What does that mean for your life? Like what obstacles or redirections might come up that are a waypoint for you that's just part of your journey? So for me in that moment, I took that as inspiration to keep working towards whatever my next waypoint was. But pretty soon <laughs> I was out of money. I was grieving the loss of a family member who had recently passed away. My boyfriend at the time broke up with me all in a really short period of time. So I moved back to my hometown and I smiled my way through the emotional pain I was going through. Remember, I felt like I just lost my identity, everything that gave me self-worth until I got my next job offer. And I was back in the game, working alongside celebrities again. Boom, got my self-worth back. I was putting on big shows, producing concerts, landing these big contracts with big names. Like this was one of my proudest moments at that company. We did the first concert with the Jacksons, like their first show after more than a decade hiatus. And I was, so proud of that. I was wearing this white dress the whole night, running around backstage and taking care of all the logistics. And I remember Jermaine Jackson stops me and goes, girl, you are wearing that dress. It was an incredible night. And it was such a crazy celebrity hurricane of a job. I was constantly running on adrenaline. 
two days after the Jackson show, my grandmother passed away. I took some time off work. I grieved. I helped my family plan a funeral. Uh, and I actually moved in with my grandfather, Guido, for those of you who might have seen him on my social media. If you've seen my Instagram stories, there's a highlight on my Instagram called Guido Stories. I just thought, you know, after 58 years of a marriage, how do you go on? So I, I moved in with him and we actually lived together for several years. Anyway, after this time off, I went back to work. My first day back, wasn't even in the office for five minutes. And my boss says, I have to let you go. He said he couldn't afford to pay me anymore. And I was shocked. I was like, why? I'm doing a great job. We just, we just had these big shows. And I was so confused. And again, my self-worth was all wrapped up in this job. So I felt like I had to beg and plead to hang on to it. And my boss replied, you'll understand one day when you have your own business. What? Me have my own business? Not only had I never considered that before, but I was so mad at him for telling me that. I told him, I want to work for you. I want this job but obviously it was time for me to go. So this was a turning point for me. This was the seed planted that opened my eyes and showed me maybe you could be an entrepreneur, but I wasn't ready yet. I'm actually gonna go into part two of this story and continue the saga and continue with the job that I finally did quit and took the steps, took the huge leap towards entrepreneurship. So if you wanna skip ahead and learn my formula for how I've built my multi seven figure business, you can click the link below for my hello to high ticket training, or make sure that you click here and listen to part two of the story because it has some key lessons that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. Yep. I'm here to tell you about the, mm -mm. I'm here to tell you about the day. Mm. I'm here to tell you. Uh, this is where I wanna do the thing. Um, what, how, did, what, how did you say that? Today. So I got to spend a lot of quiet time with a lot of these guys after their performance at quiet time. I'm gonna say quiet time. These huge names, these performers, these geniuses. So my friend told me this to say, there's no finish line, loin. <laughs> something, there's something in it that you're gonna wanna see. Lessons. Some key lessons. Part two, because it has some, some key lessons that you're not gonna, yeah, go to it.